Glover and Erskine portray that resentfulness well throughout the series, but they also have, I think, these very warm, very cute, and, and very uh, comedic moments, too. And some, some stuff that's very relatable. I mean, hey, remember when uh, you, you, you're with your stick of an other, and uh, either you or your, or your partner just farts for the first time? <laughs> And how kind of embarrassing that might be when you fart in front of them. They're like, oh, what, what was that? What happened? What was that? Especially when you're like, you're sleeping together and it's late at night and you're, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I've had some gassy girlfriends. They always try to play it off. It's like, what was that noise? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it was nothing. Like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they, they explore that in, in this series too. And so they, they, they cut that tension by cutting the cheese. <laughs> So one of the things that I was surprised to learn about very recently was that there was another Mr. and Mrs. Smith project before the uh, 2005 film with Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. Uh, to be honest, I, I had no idea about the Scott Bakula and Maria Bello 96 TV series. I, I, I can't speak of, of the quality of it since I never saw it, but it was cool to learn that, that Mr. and Mrs. Smith have kind of finally gone back to television, They've finally gone back to the medium with now the uh, 2024 Amazon TV series. You know, however, you know, I, I do have some familiarity with Mr. and Mrs. Smith with the 2005 Doug Liman movie, and I think that movie sucks. <laughs> it, it, it made a lot of money back then, and it starred Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt, who people were obsessed with as a couple for a variety of reasons. All the controversy and the behind the scenes, you know, nonsense and mumbo jumbo. Uh, to be honest, I, I didn't think they had much chemistry. <laughs> and, and I found out, uh, 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 I found most of the movie to be quite dull. Um, especially Jolie, who I've never really liked as an as an actor, you know, outside of Girl Interrupted and, and Kung Fu Panda. Stop being a wimp. And she's back. Um, and when it was announced that Amazon was going to do a Mr. and Mrs. Smith remake for streaming, you know, I, I couldn't give a shit less. <laughs> but I, I saw the trailer for the show while watching Has Been Hotel, since Amazon now has ads, even though I fucking pay for Amazon Prime. But I, I thought that the trailer looked pretty slick. And I figured it would be fun to watch and, and review a, a, a few episodes. And some of you guys had, had checked, out the, um, checked out the show, and you were, you were singing its praise, and you thought it was pretty solid, pretty good. And I, at this point, I have to admit, I, I haven't finished it all. I haven't finished all of the first season. You know, I've watched about half of it uh, at this point. Kind of started a little bit of episode uh, five. There's about eight episodes. Uh, so I can give you kind of my, my first impressions. And, and again, for those that need a bit of a, a synopsis, a bit of background for the show itself, uh, two strangers with dubious and mysterious pasts land jobs at a spy agency that offers them a life of espionage, wealth, and exotic experiences. But they are forced to create new identities and agree to an arranged and very troubled marriage. I'm going to tell you guys very early on. If you are a fan of the 2005 film, I don't think you're going to like this at all. Now, I'm saying that as someone who thinks the original movie is, is bad. I think it's poorly written. I think it's poorly directed. And I think the two leads have no chemistry with each other at all. <laughs> so take that for what you will. But if you had issues with how they handled the relationship of Brad Pitt's and Angelina Jolie's Mr. and Mrs. Smith and found the dialogue between them just insipid and dull and, and flat throughout, then I think you'll be very happy to know that this show fixes that in regard to the dialogue and certainly the performances of Donald Glover and Maya Erskine who played Mr. and Mrs. Smith, respectively. You know, Donald Glover, to me, is a renaissance man. He's a great actor, writer, filmmaker, and musician. You know, he, he's done it all uh, to great success. Hell, I remember watching him on YouTube years ago when nobody even knew who he was <laughs> doing comedic shorts and, and mystery team. What can we do for you, ma'am? Just fill out this form real quick. Can you find out who killed my parents? 
Uh, now he has a net worth of nearly $50 million, and he's Lando fucking Calrissian. <laughs> you know, g g good for him. You know, he, he, he made it. And, uh, and I like a lot of his work. Maybe not every single thing he's, he, he's done. I feel like he struggles with maybe ending some of his, his projects, especially when it comes to some of the, his shows that I've, that I've seen. But he, he's a very talented writer and filmmaker and actor and, and, and musician. There's no question. Maya Erskine, I'm not as familiar with her. Uh, however, I, I do know she played the lead role of Mizu in the animated uh, series Blue Eye Samurai, which I loved from last year. And, and she was fantastic. And as you guys know, I, 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 I watched that, that show over the course of several days, and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Not only one of the best animated shows of, of last year, but just one of the best shows of 2023. And to this day, I highly recommend checking out Blue Eye Samurai if you have not done so. And, and she's, she's really good in it, too. And I'm also very happy to say that, that Glover and Erskine are, are great together as, as Mr. And, and Mrs. Smith. And unlike the flat, lifeless dialogue of the 2005 film, their conversations uh, and, and arguments are, are some of the highlights of, of the episodes that I've seen so far, the, the four and a half episodes that I've seen. Uh, these are two fucked up people inserted into a very awkward and wild situation that instantly creates tension between the two of them that feels very raw and earned and, and, and earnest. I think some people might find their whole relationship toxic and would probably criticize that aspect of the series, but I would argue against that. I would argue that the, the, the point of the show, uh, that is the total point of the show. Y yes, it's, it's a spy show, an action series, but it's also a lot of the times a drama. A drama about these two people who probably shouldn't be together, <laughs> but they're forced to work out their, their various issues, and, and, and sometimes they're unable to. But, but you know, due to their respective circumstances, they have to rely on each other when things get really nasty due to their you know, various missions that they undertake. Um, they're also quite petty, <laughs> and that might rub people the, the wrong way watching the show. But, but again, I think that's the point of the series. Couples have arguments and do petty shit to each other all the time because they're, they're mad or in the heat of the moment or have you know, long-lasting resentments that you know, bubble up to the surface, even if it has nothing to do with the initial argument or conflict itself. Again, petty shit, but realistic. And, and Glover and Erskine portray that resentfulness well throughout the series. But they also have, I think, these very warm, very cute, and, and very uh, comedic moments, too. And some, some stuff that's very relatable. I mean, hey, remember when uh, you, you, you're you with your significant other, and uh, either you or your, or your partner just farts for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> and how kind of embarrassing that might be when you fart in front of them. They're like, oh, what, what was that? What happened? What was that? Especially when you're like, you're sleeping together and it's late at night and you're, <laughs> and, you know, I've had some gassy girlfriends. They always try to play it off. It's like, what was that noise? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure it was nothing. Like, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> they, they explore that in, in this series too. And so they, they, they cut that tension. By cutting the cheese. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. But again, we, we've all been through stuff like that. And I, I like those moments because as over the top as this series could get, as ridiculous as some of these scenarios are, that is a, that is a very real moment that all of us have experienced. <laughs> it's like no question about that. And like th that moment wouldn't be. In, in the Angelina Jolie or Brad Pitt movie. You think the Angelina Jolie or Brad, I mean, Brad Pitt would. Brad Pitt would, yeah, he doesn't care now. He's like, yeah, I do, that's fine. But then Angelina Jolie, she's like, I am not farting. <laughs> I am not farting while I'm sleeping. And have Brad Pitt go, what the hell was that? <laughs> like, she wouldn't do that. But they do stuff like that in this show. And I, and I, I, think, that's, I think that's pretty funny. Um, now, for those that are concerned over the fact that I haven't really brought up the action or, or spycraft in the series. Don't worry, that's there as well. Well, we're waiting. You know, each episode that I've seen so far 
has a big action sequence in it. And, and I like that the action is, is definitely inspired by various other spy franchises. Most would say it borrows from uh, Jason Bourne um, and, and can be quite grounded a lot of the time. Uh, but there, there is certainly stuff that feels like it's taken from a James Bond movie, too. And it's a little more bombastic and, and certainly fun. There's a, a particularly great moment in episode three where Glover and Erskine are, are spying on another uh, couple that evolves into something much bigger than it was supposed to be. I thought I thought that was I thought that was great. And there, there's also a lot more blood and gore in this series. People are getting their faces shot off. Their bodies are being snapped and folded in on themselves in a bathtub. Like some of it is like serial killer shit. And it's it's really creepy and 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 gross when when it happens and kind of shocking, you know. And in between all the couple arguments and you know some of the more comedic moments to have, like, all right, well, we gotta take care of this body. We gotta snap his limbs all <laughs> on top of himself in order to get rid of it, so it's a little easier. Kind of carpentiment, uh, 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 kind of uh, carpentimentalize him, you know, make him a little a uh, little smaller. I think that's very funny. Uh, and, and the relationship issues, I think, factor into their missions as well and, and adds a layer of, you know, the, of the comedy and, 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 and tension. Uh, you also have some pretty good supporting uh, uh, cast members in this, too. And, and the two standouts for me thus far are uh, Wagner Mora and Parker Posey, who play another Mr. and Mrs. Smith, a more experienced couple who have been in the game much longer. You know, there, there's some great moments with them and their interactions with, with, with Glover and Erskine are, are fantastic. You know, there's this um, friendly facade to them and, and also this creepy menace that rears its head, especially through their conversations. You know, a, a double date, for instance, turns into a very awkward an uncomfortable uh, date night. And you have other people in, in, in the series as well as kind of like guest star roles or kind of small recurring roles. John Turturro, he's in the series, and he plays this very wealthy individual who's very... I mean, he's he's John Turturro, so you, you get two things from John Turturro. You either get comedic John Turturro or really creepy John Turturro. <laughs> It's, it's always one of the two. You never get like a wholesome version of him. It's just, no, that's what you get. That's what you get with him. And he plays a, a very uh, rich, wealthy character that... Glover and Erskine have to have to deal with, and he puts them into a very awkward, uncomfortable uh, situation, and, and he's and he's very threatening in the series. Uh, Paul Dano is also in the show as the, and I quote, "hot neighbor." And I'm not here to make fun of. I'm not here to make fun of Paul Dano, but I've never seen him. I've never heard him described as as hot. <laughs> To me, he's, you know, he's a great actor, and I'm sure he's a great person, a great guy. He's, he was always come across that way, but he's a salamander of a human. <laughs> he's an amphibious individual, a reptile-esque person, and he does a great job playing those kind of characters, but I couldn't believe. That, to me, is the most unrealistic moment so far in this show. When you add a character, say, I, I don't know, I think, I think Paul Dano's kind of hot. He's the hot neighbor. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sure, but we find out a little bit more about him in the in the series as well. But yeah, and they have a lot of other like uh, guest stars uh, in this in this show, and some people I haven't even seen yet, and so I'm looking forward to because I was looking at the cast list, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, of the guest stars that they've had, some of the small recurring characters, I, I think they've been uh, uh, quite good so far. But in the end, I I'm really enjoying the series, uh, and I didn't expect to. Again, when I first heard that they were making a Mr. and Mrs. Smith show, I'm just like, why? I'm like, okay, the movie, you know, it was a commercial success but at the time, but I don't think it's really been in the pop culture zeitgeist for all that long. I think, you know, it was kind of dull, so I had no interest. Um, but I have to admit, when I saw that first, when I saw that trailer, and I was like, wow, this looks d different. It, it's different. It's very different from the original, uh, uh, you know, film. Maybe it's more like the original TV series, uh, for all I know. It could be. It honestly could be, which in that case, cool. Um, but I want to eventually finish all of it, and, and perhaps I'll do like a shorter season one review covering the back four episodes, similar to what I did with Hasbin Hotel. But, you know, unlike something like more recently like Argyle, uh, which represents to me like just the worst 
of the spy genre, how bad a film within the spy genre could be. Something like Mr. and Mrs. Smith shows how much you can have fun with it and also adds layers of intrigue by incorporating marital issues into it. Uh, and, and that's what I think keeps the subgenre of the spy movie healthy and, and compelling by adding genre bending elements. And uh, I really liked it. I'm curious to see how this is going to wrap up. I, uh, uh, Donald Glover is a producer on this. He's a writer on this, um, along with a number of other people. If I have a criticism of Donald Glover as, as a creator, even though I think he's very talented, his endings are not very strong. And so I wonder if this might be plagued with ending issues. I haven't like seen um, uh, uh, like any spoilers or anything like that, but I'm wondering if, if this is going to be similar to something like Atlanta, which I felt like did not have a very strong ending, or certainly like Swarm that did not have a, uh, uh, a strong ending at all. So uh, we'll see about that. But, but overall, I'm really like what I'm seeing so far. I think it's a great palate cleanser after Argyle. It's like, hey, this is, this is what we can do within the spy genre. Taking something that, in my opinion, originally didn't work, flipping on its head, actually really diving into like the mirror issues and w- what that would be like within a spy organization filled with intrigue and, and, yes, comedy, but also some really disturbing kind of sick, twisted stuff too. I, I like that. I really love the genre-bending aspects. But what about you guys? Um, have you guys seen the season so far? Have you seen all of it? Uh, did you like it? Did you dislike it? Were you compelled to watch it even beforehand? You know, I certainly wasn't, but I have to admit, I really liked what I've seen. But please go ahead and, and let me know. Five minutes later. Oh, the gore in the show is surprised. It, it really is. It really is. Peacemaker gave me the bo- the boys vibes. Yeah, yeah, I can, you know, I can, I understand that 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 comparison. Yeah, it opens up with a pretty um, graphic scene. There's a lot of again. I want to mention that every single actor is in it because it's kind of a surprise when they're in the episode. It's like, oh shit, you got this person in it. That's pretty cool. Or, the, or this couple, right? Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of surprising, gross violence in it that I did not expect. Um, but I think that's done on purpose to kind of throw you off because so much of it is because they have these very naturalistic conversations where it just feels like you know a married couple getting through their bullshit and then something horrific happens. Like, ah, how do we deal with this now? Well, they still argue and stuff, which I think is fun. Let's see here. But I agree. Um, I'm glad I'm not the only one who, th- who, who thinks that. <laughs> what, the farting Naya? The farting? Paul Dan- oh, you're talking about Paul Dano. Uh, Paul Dano is also funny and everything. Paul Dano is great. Uh, Paul Dano reminds me of that scene in X-Men when Magneto turns that guy into <laughs> With Senator Kelly. <laughs> With Senator Kelly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Where he turns him into like a, a jellyfish man. Yeah, he definitely. It's like, this, this is the son. This is the son of the jellyfish man of <laughs> Senator Kelly. Wow, Naya, that is very accurate. That is very accurate. Third, the old show was oh, was Scott Bakula. I've never seen, I didn't even know about it. I was, when I was prepping for the review, I was like, there's a, wait, what? I thought it was just based on the movie. But there was an old show. I was like, oh. I heard, uh, let's see. Did you, I hear the Batman version of the Riddler was, uh, has a lot of pen pals in, in, in Arkham, I guess so. Mm. In, the, in the show, they both knew they were spies. And it's, it's very much the case uh, here, where they, they know, they, like, they agree to it. It's not like the situation where Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, Can we don't know, we're both spies for competing spy organizations. Like, they both... Like the Mr. and again, I don't want to say too much because it's, you know, lots revealed, but like the Mr. and Miss, it's like a program. It's a program they participate in, and it's like, all right, listen, you, you can be part of this program because we've kind of vetted you and we know what you are all about, obviously. Uh, we'll give you the wealth, and we'll give you comfort, and you'll be paid, you know, like this specific amount, everything. You'll do great, but you have to pose as this married couple. You actually have to like be married and live with each other and do that as part of the program and the processing and shit. And they, I like how they, you know, they, they keep the organization, at least so far, again, for all I know, they can reveal everything in episode six or something, but, you know, they keep the organization, like, pretty uh, mysterious, and, like, they receive messages, you know, I mean, just via their computers and things, and so uh, they, they, they eventually do meet other Mr. and Mrs. Smiths, which is cool, which is kind of like they get a better sense of what the organization is like or the types of people that are a part of it, which I thought was really interesting. Um, with uh, Wagner uh, Mora. Wagner Mora, I should give him a shout. Wagner Mora, um, which I'm hoping saying his name correctly. 
I think he's a Brazilian actor, but he's probably best known for playing uh, Pablo Escobar in Narcos, uh, which I've seen the first two seasons of that show. I never watched the other seasons of that show, but I, he was excellent as, as Pablo Escobar. And he was the voice of, of death. And Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. He was the big bad wolf in that. I thought he did such a fantastic... I was like, oh, that's him too. I didn't didn't realize that. And he did such a great job. And Parker Posey's great too. Like, there's yeah, there's a lot of... They get a lot of talented people in this. They give them, like, some really cool things to do. A lot of disturbing things to do. I think it's really interesting. 